just going to say it. Morgan Wallen was robbed. And I don't even say that as someone who's a super fan or someone who's been a diehard defender of his since that night in January three years ago. Objectively, the most popular singer of any given year should expect to be recognized by his or her peers, and these charts show that in 2023, Mo was it. So what the heck happened? I asked you that question in a YouTube poll, and here are some of the early results, but I'll save the comments for the end of this video. One explanation is that there's no Artist of the Year category at the Grammys. A second is that it's absolutely true that there's a small group of people who will just not be able to support Morgan no matter what the circumstances are ever again. But the question I'll ask now and answer by the end of this video is, is if Morgan never said what he said in 2021, would he be nominated for a Grammy today? I'll take answers in the comments below and read some of your responses at the end of this video. Either way, there's something much more problematic that resulted in him getting shut out in 2024, and that's what I hope you'll get really fired up about. The bad news? If history holds true, this kind of thing is likely to happen again, and again, and again. Here's what Grammy CEO Harvey Mason said when asked pretty directly about Wallen getting shut out in 2024. One of his songs was nominated, by the way, but Wallen didn't write it, so technically he's yet to earn his first Grammy nom. Credit Variety for asking the tough questions, but Mason answered a little bit generically, saying he thinks voters do a pretty good job of judging music only, but concedes that it's all really subjective. Quote, and when it comes to snubs, it absolutely disappoints me. I know what it feels like to put all your heart and your soul into a project that you really believe you believe is your best work. Harvey is a musician, by the way. I don't know, do you believe him? Wallen never really said anything when his name wasn't called for a nomination last October, but one month later, he did say something after he was shut out of the CMA Awards. Walked in tonight a winner, didn't leave no different, he said on Instagram. I mean, I kind of love that approach, because ultimately these awards don't do nearly as much for someone's career as the support of millions of fans. Here's some quick boilerplate of Morgan Wallen accomplishments in 2023 and a few rankings where relevant. Popularity rarely equals Grammy love, and let me show you what I mean by that. We once made a list of the most played country songs for every year, and as I scroll through that list, I'll say something if any of them received a Grammy. Searching, searching, searching. Ah, yeah, yeah, right there, stop. Right there. That one. 2009, Lady A had the most played song on country radio, and they won a Grammy in the... Best country performance in the duo or group category with this song. The point is, you saw Morgan's name there twice and nada. And he's hardly the first one. Here is a list of country superstars who have won as many Grammy Awards as you and me. Working from top to bottom, you see Martina McBride, 14 noms, no wins. Jamie Johnson and Eric Church have a combined zero Grammys and 20 nominations. Blake Shelton, Kenny Chesney, Toby Keith, all no Grammys. And then who I think is the most surprising, Luke Bryant joins Morgan Wallen in the No Nomination Club. Luke Bryant, multi-time entertainer of the year, arguably the artist of the decade, zero Grammys. I mean, th that is shocking. Or is it? The Grammys are pretty suggestive, and I'm going to take Harvey Mason's word that voters vote on the music but when it comes to country categories, this pretty diverse group is forever comparing modern country to whatever the definition of country each has rolling around in his or her head. They're not really like you and me, meaning they're not really plugged into what's good about contemporary country music. Usually this borrowed definition of country music is pretty traditional, or it's music from an artist that fits a certain ideology of what each person thinks country music should be. Artists that trend Americana do remarkably well, and women do better at the Grammys than at country awards shows. For example, check out this category from the 2012 Grammys. Do you remember the Civil Wars? I barely do, and I think I wrote that article. Mostly I remember that they were pretty good sleepy time music, but they do have a Grammy, and you and tequila doesn't. You and tequila make me crazy. It was similar in 2014 for the Civil Wars, a duo that for some reason Grammy voters loved, I call music in that style Grammy bait, and the epitome is Alison Krauss, who has 27 Grammys, fourth most all time, but radio won't touch her music, and it really won't sell, but Grammy voters feel pretty good about supporting something new and different, and it fits their definition of what country music 
should be. It's kind of like when a judge tries to shape the law from the bench. I mean, they're really not supposed to do that. You see this in other places as well. Only one of the last five winners in the Best Country Song category received radio airplay. Same for Best Country Solo Performance, where Willie Nelson has won two of the last five trophies. He's an example of another truth. Having transcendent popularity really helps because, you know, if there's a list of five artists to choose from and you really only know Willie's name and maybe you're in a hurry to get the ballot in, boom. Last October, Variety talked to West Coast Grammy members who flat out said it's not what Morgan Wallen said or did, it's that his music doesn't resonate with the coasters like it does in middle America. So, why isn't Morgan Wallen at the Grammys? It's not a matter of if he deserves it or not, as much as it is, Grammy people aren't likely to wear t-shirts like this, found at the Taste of Country store below. And if you made it this far into the video, they're probably not your people either. They're looking for the next Allison Krauss, and he's probably closer to the next Luke Bryant, and I think that's kind of hard to hear. In fact, I know it is. Some of the response to my early poll included a comment from Johnny Myers, who says Morgan doesn't conform to the system, that's why he was shut out. I'd argue that as a major label artist who chases radio airplay and bridges genres in the ways that successful artists have done for decades, he's the epitome of the system, and that's why he was shut out. He's no Zach Bryant, an artist who just did receive a Grammy nomination. Zach, by the way, is the subject of another excellent video that I think you'll really like if you're forever frustrated by country radio. You'll see it here, or maybe over here. Hundreds have joined the conversation, and I hope you will too. I'm Billy Dukes for Taste of Country. Thanks for watching, and thanks for subscribing.